we are running out of time and I've been asked to summarize 20 years of experience in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also a very fast speaker in any language, so bear with me if this gets too fast. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a, the first private marine park in the world, both established privately and financed pri privately, and is totally self-funded. No government subsidies, no donor aid. It's only tourists paying it, and only 14 per day. Now, the challenge is how to make it work, ecotourism together with local fishermen, how to make both win, a win-win situation. Now, Tanzania is very different from this part of the world. Local fishing communities are, as you see, look poor, they depend on fishing. Uh, if you, I mean, mostly very attractive for tourism, it looks very idyllic, but if you talk about these people about catch and release, they think you come from outer space. <laughs> so there's no option of even sparing a wonderful guitar shark from being eaten. They need it to eat and to get some money. Now, as a result, Tanzanian coral reefs are in dire straits. The biggest challenge is dynamite fishing all along the coast, every day, relentlessly. And we're talking about organized crime. It's government people behind it, it's big people behind it, and fishermen are employed to do it, so it's very hard to fight. We have overfishing, we have cruel trade, we have bleaching. Of course, uh, as the rest of the world, we have some starting overdevelopment and we have uh, pollution, but the strongest and biggest challenge is dynamite fishing and uh, overfishing. <coughs> now, we have to make people understand that coral have a value without taking everything out. So. This manta is one meal for some few people only and income for many over many years if it's used by ecotourism, if benefits are shared. Somehow those people who eat it otherwise have to benefit from the living manta, how to do it. Uh, well, in Tanzania and many parts of Africa, conservation is at odds with local communities. It's actually hated. Yeah? It's seen as something only foreigners can enjoy. They come to see the wild animals, while local people are seeing them as dangerous, you know, uh, the, the reality is in terrestrial parks, Serengeti everywhere, local people have to be taken out of the park for, for the animals to thrive. And for them, the spillover effect of uh, wild animals is life-threatening. It's elephants trampling their shambas, their fields, kids being attacked by lions or women attacked by lions on the way to the school or to the water place. So for them, wild animals are just wild and dangerous and they don't enjoy seeing them. On the other hand, they are also not allowed to hunt them for bushmeat because they're all uh, government property. So for, for the human wildlife conflict, it's a serious concern for terrestrial parks. However, uh, there are projects trying to compensate, but how can you compensate for a life lost or benefit sharing of tourism with local people? And there's endless struggles over how much you can pay to them. I mean, it's, it will be never be enough. And that's what I thought. We have one huge advantage of marine parks over terrestrial parks, which has not really been used. Uh, marine parks, you also have to take people out because you want a no tax zone, no fishing, no anchorage. Uh, you have to exclude fishermen from an area and have to, they must agree to it. But it creates fish nurseries and it restocks neighboring reefs, uh, reefs which have been uh, uh, overfished badly. And you have the famous spillover effect, which in this case is very beneficial because there's no human wildlife conflict. Fishermen get more sh uh, f harvests outside the area if it's well managed, and that's the challenge. Most marine parks in the world, and in Tanzania unfortunately as well, are actually uh, paper parks. They're not managed, poorly managed, they're major government issues. Uh, Parks, to create a park authority means creating a central bureaucracy which takes resource control away from local people. We have bureaucrats caring for uh, 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 conservation area park and what do they care? I mean, they have no connection to it. Uh, rangers normally are not former fishermen. They're people who have been educated to a certain level. They come in Tanzania from upland areas. They don't speak the language of fishermen. They have no idea about fishing. So relationships are very poor. And park authorities coming into an area uh, by, by default crowd out local initiatives uh, and 
they, they just end up having poor relationships with both fishermen and the tourism sector. Because the tourism sector depends on the resource well managed, and if it doesn't work, of course, everybody suffers. So there's a new paradigm for park management, which involves local communities, but also the private sector. Because if, if you want to have tourism, you need private sector to invest and create the minimum infrastructure needed for tourism. So ecotourism has a vested interest in conservation, and profits are a condition for sustainability. So if you want a park to function, well, I would say start small and start private. <laughs> uh, now, private investment in marine conservation can be uh, a private marine park like Chumba Island Coral Park. It can also be management contracts for core zones, no tax zones within larger parks, which are given out by park authorities to a an, an, uh, tourism operator. It can also be support of monitoring, surveillance, and training and marketing by dive operators. These boats are out every day. In Tanzania, in the marine parks, we have dive boats out every day. The park authority claims they don't have fuel for the boat, so they don't go out. So uh, these dive boats, they see the fishing happening, the poaching within the park. They, they, they try to report, but nobody wants to listen to them because of the poor relationship between tourism and the park authorities. Now, Chumba Island, uh, on the background of all this, which I saw over many years, I have to say, I come, came to Tanzania as an aid worker. I've been working with the aid industry for 30 years, and I got disillusioned, and I quit. <laughs> and I became a kind of social entrepreneur. So when I came to, Tanz to Zanzibar in 91, in a consultancy for Finnish aid on environmental education, which is my, my field, uh, I'm an education planner, uh, I made us some proposals for the government what to do to create awareness about the marine resources. And uh, with the problem with the dynamite fishing, lack of awareness, I realized schools did not teach anything about corals. And Zanzibar is a coral island. And uh, Kiswahili, the word, Kiswahili, the language of the country and of all the people there, uh, if you talk to fishermen, corals, what is corals? They say mawela myamba, rocks and stones. Yeah, rocks and stones. So why do the foreigners get so much upset about plastic stones? You only break big stones into smaller stones. What's the problem? Yeah. So there was a huge need for education. So I suggested a small educational marine park, which is funded by ecotourism, and I went around the whole island for two months looking for a site. And I suggested to government, but they were not interested. So I thought, okay, why not do it myself? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the island, Chumba Island, uh, which is uninhabited, uh, no people living on it because there's no water. Uh, it was also partly military closed because being on the shipping channel between Dar es Salaam and Zanzibar, the small, by then only sailor sailing boats would have obstructed uh, the big shipping vessels. Uh, objectives of the company from the very beginning to have a marine park and forest reserve, the whole island totally closed, totally managed, state of the art, fully funded by ecotourism, not for profit objectives, but run commercially because we have to make profit to run it. And we had management plans from 1995 up to 2016. We had to win community support. We might well have to say we had four years of negotiation with government. I leave this out now because this was the hard part. <laughs> now, uh, we had to win community support, village meetings, getting fishers to become rangers and employing them, though they were partly illiterate. They had to be trained for decades to become good rangers and tourism guides. So we need a lo very long uh, period to actually do it. Uh, on the job training by volunteers, so we could afford it, and also for their enthusiasm. Uh, the rangers, they can educate fishers because they are fishers. They have been fishers in their former lives, and they fish in their free time. And we had have education programs for schools, for all the schools in Zanzibar. We have an advisory committee, and uh, management plans are developed in a participatory, uh, involving local people. This is the Chumba Coral Reef you see today, the marine park. After 20 years of protection, we have more than 400 fish species, more than 90% of all coral species uh, found in the East Africa, and it's on only one kilometer stretch of reef, 300 meters wide. We have turtles there resident all the time because they find enough to feed and they're not, nothing is happening to them. It's really totally no take. Uh, this is the Chumba forest. It's awesome. It's a virgin semi tribe forest. There are very few left in East Africa. Uh, flagship species, turtles, uh, this giant coconut crabs, large land crabs on Earth. We have breeding rosier terns and we have uh, Etas dicus as its en endemic. So we have all endangered and, and rare species. We had to go to, to take away, cut out uh, invasive species and threats. We did a huge campaign to get rid of rats, which was a major challenge. 
We have had an epidemic of cots, chronosons, which eat the corals. We had to take them out physically. We took out thousands of them. We, had to control, we have to control Indian house grouse and uh, diadema sea, sea urchin, which are sometimes too many. This is the visitor center, which was built on the island, uh, and it is for ed used for education. This is the Echo Lodge with only seven bungalows, which funds the whole thing. We have a turnover of about uh, half a million dollars per year, which is enough to run the park. It's a fraction of the, what government parks uh, uh, cost. But this is really everything is spent on site and refed into the project, and that's why it works. Any building on the island is totally ecological. Uh, all energy is uh, solar, solar water, he water heating, photovoltaic, tyke, rainwater catchment, because there's no water on the island. A composting toilets of zero sewage, no flush water, because also water is sparse. And so uh, vegetative gravity of filtration for any shower water and kitchen water to get the nutrients out and uh, put them into the compost. Education programs had to start with the government <laughs> and the fishers and the schools. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <coughs> of course, if you create, I have to mention that the project lasted building up about eight years and cost three times more than planned, so it became quite expensive. So we had to go up market in our rates, which of course was a challenge for marketing. And then you think, well, if you have people on the island uh, with, with only seven bungalows, uh, and then they spend like 270 to $300 per person per night, do they want to have school children running around and being taught at the same time? And do we have to do it low season, high season, something like that? But our surprise was our guests love it. You know, They love it to help the kids, the girls, to fit on the masks and learn how to snorkel. And actually some of them ask us, well, when will the next school uh, trip coming over? So education goes along very well with upmarket uh, 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 tourism, if you target the right market, of course. Uh, girls snorkeling. Uh, Zanzibar is a Muslim country, it's state religion. So uh, you woman, women never learn how to swim and snorkel because then they would have to address a little bit. So we do it separately, girls and boys come separately and girls are uh, taught how to snorkel, how to, s how to swim and to see for the first time in their life, see a living coral. And it's just amazing how, how, they, they, they how much they love it and, and they want to come back. Lessons learned, red tape and corruption, big issue. Ecotechnology technology being more expensive than thought, and, uh, but and even to keep it running, especially for solar, has been a major, major challenge. We needed to go up, go up market, and uh, tourism uh, may be volatile, can be volatile. We had some slums, but if you are very frugal in your management, as you can as a, do as, as a private uh, uh, operator, uh, we learned with about 40% occupancy, we can survive well for the management of the park. It will not be challenged. And the rest can be for extra programs. We, we actually, for the last four years, we had between 70 and 86 percent of occupancy. We are now number one of trip advisor uh, of all 150 hotels in Zanzibar. And uh, Chum is also mentioned in the UN Secretary's report to the General Assembly for Rio Plus 20. They're such a power graph, so we're very proud. <laughs> 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 <coughs> So we hope that for these kids, corals are not Marvin and Yamba anymore, but corals, a living thing. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>